Check one, two, mic test. Good evening, everyone. Magandang gabi po. Are you ready to worship the Lord? Amen. We have come into this place to worship the Lord. Amen. And before we do that, we will pray. So I, uh, let's call on Brother Johan to lead us into prayer. Good afternoon, CRC. Good afternoon. You ready? Yes. Ako masakit pa katawan ko. <laughs> Kahapon na. <laughs> so, amen. So, before we pray, I uh, just want to share with you something I read a um, few weeks ago. So, uh, in Exodus chapter 32, you know the, the Jews, the Israelites, sinned against God by worshiping the golden calf, di ba? You remember that? And then... God was angry with them. So, sabi ni Lord dun sa kay Moses, uubusin ko to, I'll wipe them out. No, I'll wipe them, uubusin ko sila, ayoko na. I'll make a new nation out of you, Moses. Di ba, yun na sabi niya. But, and then, um, but uh, Moses medyo matigas ang ulo. Sabi niya, no Lord, remember you promised our Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, what you promised them, you remember that you make them into a great nation. And then, so finally, the Lord relented. Sabi niya, okay, I will not consume them. Tapos, um, in uh, Exodus 33, the Lord said, I'll send my angel to go with you. Yun ang sabi, ni, sabi ng Panginoon. Kasi medyo galit pa din siya, di ba? And for us, um, sometimes we pray, di ba? Lord, send your angels to guide us. Send your angels to protect us, to lead us. Ganun. Sometimes, I think there's nothing wrong with that. Pero si Moses, ibang klase. Ang sabi niya, if your presence will not go with us, we will not leave this place. Yun ang sabi. Ang sabi ng author, uh, this prayer really um, spoke to him. Yung, uh, prayer ni Moses, di ba? Instead of Praying na, Lord, send us your angels. Ang sabi niya, Lord, we need your presence. Diba? Today, as Christians, pag meron tayong mga gagawin, ganun ang ginagawa natin. But instead of asking God for anything else, let's ask God for His presence. Diba? Amen. Tayo, in church, we're trying to rebuild. Of course, we ask God to bless us. But let's ask God for His presence upon our lives, Amen. upon our church. Okay? Ano yung special, special skills ni Moses? Ang sabi ng author, wala. He has no special skills. But he insisted, instead of doing things for God, Moses insisted on doing things with God. Amen. Uh, I hope na uh, matandaan natin, we do things with God always. No? Father, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for your presence, Lord, here tonight, Lord God. We thank you for your presence, Lord. Be with us, Lord. Just like what Moses prayed, Lord. We need your presence, Lord, here, Lord. Sa buhay namin, in everything we do, Lord, wherever we go, we need your mighty presence, Lord, and your anointing. Lord, be with us as we um, have our service, as we worship, Lord. As the word is preached, Lord, tonight, your presence, Lord, be in our hearts. So we yes, remember Jesus. everything that will be preached, Lord. Yes, Lord that seeds be planted, Lord. If we have unbelievers here, Lord God, let, there's, let this be a start of something good in them, Lord God. Lord, we thank you, Lord, and we praise you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, Lord. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's all stand. Let's stand up for the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Are you ready to worship the King of kings and Lord of lords? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's bow before Him tonight. He is King of kings and Lord of lords, and He's worthy of our praise. And let's forget about ourselves and focus on the Lord. He is our God. Amen. Clap your hands. Woo! Broken hearts declare his 
praise. Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Our God is the lion, the lion of Judah. is roaring in power and fighting our battles. And every knee we bow before him. Our God is the lamb, the lamb that was slain. For the sins of the world, His blood breaks the chains. And every knee would bow before the Lion and the Lamb. Every knee would bow before Him. Oh. Tonight, Pastor Jimmy will be bringing the Word of God, so I'll be taking care of the announcements. So first of all, always make sure that your mobile devices are on silent mode. And then for your information, CRC or Church of the Virgin Christ is on YouTube, but our services are now delayed because we don't have the capacity to uh, do live broadcasting here. And uh, for those that don't know, we have a temporary office. Our office is now located at number 6 Harris Street, and that is the Helping Hands uh, CRU, or building, and we're using that now as a temporary place for our office. Um, in the back, there is a, a few t-shirts uh, still left, uh, t-shirts from New Creation, uh, for sale at 400 pesos apiece, and this is a fundraiser. All the um, Proceeds will go to the rebuilding or to the building or constructing of our, our new place because we have quite a bit of constructing to do. And so the new creations under Pastor Jim and uh, Marlon uh, decided that they would do a fundraiser. Remember, this is not uh, an official church fundraiser, but this is a fundraiser of new creations. And then you can also find us on Facebook. Uh, those that are involved in CPUG, CPUG is a ministry that we have towards the uh, prisoners uh, there will be a CPUG ministry May 25, that is this coming Thursday. Uh, those that want to meet at office, please be there at 8 a.m. or you can go straight to the prison at uh, 8.30 in the morning. For our Wednesday night services, uh, for the meantime, we are still meeting at WordCom Church at 7 p.m. Pastor Jimmy will be sharing still on the parables. Uh, WordCom Church is located across... Um, Jackson High School on the corner, uh, uh, right across 14th Street on the other side of Jackson. So that's WordCom. That's where we meet temporarily until we are able to move into our, our new place. Uh, so 7 p.m. at WordCom. Our Sunday services are here for now. And uh, it's at, here at Subak, 5 p.m. And uh, for those that don't know, uh, we do have a few shuttle services available uh, we have a few people that volunteer their vehicles, and they're also doing the driving themselves. So they, they meet at um, Botica Natin at 4 p.m. up to 5 p.m. So if you need a ride, uh, and this is especially for those that are um, uh, the PWDs or our senior citizens and big families maybe, uh, you can go there at 4 p.m. to 5 p.m. and get a free Right, but let's give our uh, shuttlers, is that the right word, shuttlers, a round of applause. They are not hired. They are not your regular drivers. So whenever you get on, please do say thank you to them because they're doing this as a service for you and for God. Amen? Amen. So please offer thanks and gratitude towards them. DFD, Designed for Discipleship. Uh, is here at Subak, 2 p.m. So if you're involved in the design, design for discipleship, it starts at 2 p.m. at the lobby area, and uh, that's up to uh, 4 p.m. right before our service. For our Family Connect, uh, wait for further announcements. We're going to discuss where we will have our Family Connect. Uh, right now, we don't have a place, so please wait for further announcements. With that, it will be good to like our Facebook page. You need to like Church of the Risen Christ. That way, you will get all the information and announcements that is going out because right now, we don't have our permanent place. So it's very important that you do like our page so that you can get notified with all of our announcements. A youth service, asan si Ali? Ali? Ali. Sanang youth service nyo this May 27th? 
Wala pa? To be announced? Okay, so to be announced, now again, because we don't have a, our own place yet, so uh, we're moving around using different places, so it will be announced. Um, tawag dito. So it's been a month now since the fire um, consumed all of our stuff and the building that we are using. Uh, we did find a place, for those that don't know, we did sign a contract uh, about a week ago. Um, and we signed a contract for five years. But there's quite a bit work that needs to be done as far as constructing rooms uh, because it's a warehouse. So we need to, we need to do some construction. And um, we're taking a little bit time in deciding, in, in starting the, the building, uh, because we have to make the right decisions on, on what to do, what materials to use, because we don't want to spend a whole lot of money, but we do want to do it the right way, because whether we like it or not, it will cost a lot, but we want to keep it as minimum as possible. At the same time, we want to do it right. So we're taking a little bit time in the... In the, the uh, first step of uh, the designs and uh, the costing. So please bear with us, but we'll, we'll try to move into that place as soon as possible. For those that, um, that are asking about uh, how can we give, like we shared, we have not yet really started a fundraiser. And the reason for that is because we don't really know how much it will cost totally. We want to start doing that once we know how much it will cost. And uh, we do have some finances. We do have some finances put aside. We're hoping that we'll be able to soon uh, get um, money from the insurance. I don't know how long that will take. Sometimes it takes a long time. So maybe we won't be able to wait for that. Let's pray. But some people are asking, you know, how can we give? And so every service, every Sunday service, we... Uh, We have a separate offering uh, box for those that want to give towards the rebuild fund. So the other offering boxes is used for our general fund, for the general expenses of the church. But this one right here is used for our rebuild fund. So just in case you came with a special offering towards a refilled, rebuild fund, please put it in this box later uh, during the offering. So that's about all of the announcements. Anything else? We have children's service uh, tonight, uh, yes, this afternoon in the lobby. So we're going to ask all the children ages 4 to 12 to please stand. Lata Mabata, ages 4 to 12, please stand. And we'll take this time to pray for you. If you have, there's a child beside you, please lay your hands on them as we pray for them. Father, we thank you, Lord God, for our children. Children truly are a blessing from you, Lord God. Lord, as we minister to them, Lord God, this afternoon, Lord God, and share your word, Lord God, we pray, Lord God, that they would be ministered unto, not only entertained, Lord God, that not only stories will be told to them, Lord God, but your word will minister to them through your Holy Spirit. We thank you for our teachers, Lord God, that are committed, Lord God, to ministering to the children. We ask, Lord God, for an anointing upon them and that you would bless our teachers as well, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God, for this time with the children, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. So lahat ng mga bata, pwede na kayo pumunta sa likod sa may lobby for your classes this evening. So let's welcome Pastor Jimmy with the Word of God this evening. Good evening, everyone. Analangin po tayo, let us pray. Father, we thank you for this evening. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you, Father, that you never change. You are the same yesterday. Today, in this very moment, and in the days and the years, and the ages to come, you never change. That means your character of goodness never changes. That means your ability to do miracles 
never changes. That means your love towards your people, towards us, it never changes. Your power never changes. You never run out of the ability to intervene in our lives. You never change. Your promises never change, oh God. So tomorrow and the years and the ages to come as we read your word, that promise is always the same. Because you, oh God, never change. If you said it before, it is said now. And it is said tomorrow, you never change, oh God. Oh, Father, that it's such a powerful message to us that you never change. But even so more powerful, you never change and you are here in this place right now. Because your word says, wherever two or three are gathered in your name, you are in their midst. So, Father, the God that never changes... The God who has power that never changes is here in our midst. Narito ka, Panginoon, sa aming kalagitan. That means, brothers and sisters, if you need a miracle from God, the God that doesn't change is here tonight. Andito po siya ngayon. Oh, Father, we thank you. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Father. Oh, you're so good. Napakabuti mo, Diyos. Let's just take a few moments, brothers and sisters. And allow the Spirit of God to move in this place. Speaking of miracles, yung anak ni brother uh, Jason Lakbayan, si Zach, needs a miracle. Yung kapatid natin, Brother Ed, had a stroke uh, a few weeks ago. He needs a miracle. And some of you here tonight need a miracle. Let's believe God. Amen, Paul. Because God never changes. Father, tonight, in the name of Jesus, we lift up Zach Lakbain and we pray, Father, for your healing upon his life. Father, we claim the promise of healing that by the stripes of Jesus, He was and He is healed. Your promises are true. Father, we lift up Brother Ed, Sayo Panginoon, and we believe that there is absolutely nothing impossible. You are the God that created the human life. You know exactly how to restore. So Father, tonight we pray that You would restore what was lost sa buhay po ni Brother Ed. And that you would also provide for every need of both Zach and his family and Brother Ed and his family. Oh, we give you praise tonight. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's give God a clap of praise. Well, good evening po sa inyong lahat. Isn't God good? Amen. Well, before uh, I begin with my message, um, yesterday we had our uh, second family fun fest, and we, we'd like to thank po yung mga organizers. They did a well, uh, good job. Yes. And, Sining uh, Nanalo with Team One? Green Team, that's my team. <laughs> Well, we had a little over 400 people show up, and uh, I was particularly, uh, you know how it is, tayo mga Pinoy, when it comes to basketball, walang Krista Cristiano. So uh, I was interceding during our basketball game, because the mga naglalaro po ng basketball sa atin, you know, they're intense. Eh? And uh, true enough, God is good. The character of Christ was sh shining through. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> Meron lang isang ano, hindi ko nagustuhan eh. Meron isa dun na eh, number double zero. Uh, double zero talaga yung ano, kakayanan niya sa ano, sa basketball. 
Hindi ko na ako sasabihin na si Marlon yan. <laughs> okay, now let's get into the message tonight. But before, before the actual message, uh, as one of the pastors of Church of the Risen Christ, uh, I would like to express our uh, gratitude, mga padid, for the support that uh, we, we have been receiving. You know, the fire happened uh, last month, and, uh, you know, we were, tayo, Pastor Jesse and I and Pastor Arnell, we've been in this ministry for 30 years now. And from day one, you know, Church of the Risen Christ, for you, if, just, just in case you don't know, is 30 years old. We will be celebrating our 31st year in August. And uh, from day one, it was the three of us. Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego. I mean, that's And, uh, and uh, you know, we saw in one night, in the span of two hours, 30 years of physical work, tears, sweat, and a little bit blood go up in smokes in two hours. Dalawang oras lang na ubus lahat. In everything that we worked for, you know, and all the, the, the sacrifice, but believe it or not, uh, we didn't feel any. Hindi po kami nalungkot. We didn't feel sad. We didn't feel any regret. Ay saya. But we we it was. It's not that we're being overly positive. It's just that we we the grace of God was truly present. The topo yun. The grace of God was there, and we really felt God's grace, and how true. His word is that He will go through with us through the fire. And yung po yung nangyari. And uh, ever since, you know, uh, we've been working hard. You know, of course, we're, we're getting tired. You know, we've been doing this for 30 years. So uh, as I've mentioned, I was two years old when the church started. And, you know, we've been doing this so long. Uh, how old were you? Six. Uh, six years old. So talagang ano, you know, we've seen, we've seen everything happen, and, uh, but we know that God is good and He's taking us through. Amen. We're going somewhere. We're going somewhere. So don't worry, mga kapatid. We are going somewhere. Things are happening. And uh, like I've mentioned in my prayer, our God never changes. So from me, Pastor Jesse and Pastor Arnell, we thank you for everything. Yung mga support ninyo. We thank you for the prayers. We thank you for the messages that you send us. Uh, you know, just being here tonight is a big encouragement po para sa amin. So just uh, please understand that we are building the body of Christ together. Amen. It's not about, uh, really, it's not about Church of the Risen Christ. It's about the body of Christ. Amen po. It's about Jesus as our Lord and Savior. So tonight, let us begin with a topic of the choice to rejoice. The choice to rejoice. The meaning of rejoice is to experience joy and gladness in a high degree. To be exhilarated with lively and pleasurable sensations. To exalt. And lastly, a joy over victory. I like the last part more so than the beginning. You see, when I was reading the, the meaning of rejoice, and I was looking at myself in the mirror, alam nyo naman po yung mukha ko. You know, when I'm happy, they think I'm mad. That's, that's this face. So I'm looking at this uh, meaning, and it says, to experience joy and gladness in a high degree. And that is very rare to be seen in me. It's very rare. Madalang na madalang po yan. Maybe 37 pounds of T-bone steak will change that. But uh, it's a rare thing when I'm happy. My happiness is Pastor Jesse's sadness. So when he's sad, the way he looks when he's sad, that's my happy. So when I'm reading this, I'm saying, this doesn't apply to me. 
But I understand that rejoice simply means a joy over victory. So we have to understand that rejoicing is a joy over victory. Everybody say with me, the choice is to rejoice. The choice is to rejoice. What if you can't pay your bills? What if you can't pay your bills? The choice is to rejoice. What if you or someone you love is sick? The choice is to rejoice. Amen, Paul. The other day, Friday, sinusundo ko po si Florence, my wife. Uh, the bus comes in on Friday uh, evening, and I pick her up, be it uh, Ayala, uh, Harbor Point, or uh, somewhere in ano, uh, near Estampagpaso uh, na Longo po, depending on what bus it takes. Anyways, Friday night, when we finally get home, uh, you know, we're sitting down after dinner, and she looks at her Facebook uh, uh, news feed, and there's a memory that happened last year. Exactly one year ago last Friday was uh, the time she had a heart attack. And that was one year ago. And we rejoice because God is good. Amen, Paul. When I, when I look back at how I felt and what I was going through, what the family was going through. You know, because my wife, if you don't know her, she never gets sick. She was never hospitalized in her life, quite like myself. Ako uh, madalas lang gout, that's about it. But uh, I've never, we've never been hospitalized. My wife has never been hospitalized until last year, May. She had a heart attack. And when I received the call from uh, their office, you know, I never received calls from their office. And you, when you get a call from their office, it's, it's got to be serious. So I received a call from their office and told me what was happening. I tried to stay as calm as possible. And I was so uh, um, positive thinking that uh, I took, all I brought was uh, uh, one underwear, a pair of shorts, and a t-shirt to go to Manila from Alongapo, travel to Manila. I see my wife works in Manila. So I was, I was just hoping, you know, she got a heart attack, but uh, we're going to go home the next day. <laughs> so that's how positive I was. So uh, I show up, that's all I have, and not knowing that my wife asked me to bring a bunch of clothes for her. So, uh, you know, and then we ended up spending about 11 days, the operation, she had to receive a pacemaker, and uh, so many things happened. And uh, close to half a million pesos later, everything is said and done. But I share this because... Everything was by God's grace. How God provided, uh, not just the finances, but everything. The doctors, uh, the doctor that did the pacemaker was the be one of the best in the Philippines. And God sent us these people, not by our request, but God just sent them to us. And uh, God provided, and a lot of you helped us out as well. Salamat po sa inyong lahat. And that was a year, of, a year ago. And we rejoice, mga kapatid. The choice is to rejoice. Amen po. Now, let's continue. What if there is nothing in the refrigerator? I remember Pastor Jesse sharing with us one time, ang sabi niya, just to give thanks. Give thanks that you have, you at least have a refrigerator. Amen po. Diba? You know, you don't, at least you have a refrigerator. And when you open, there might be some water. The choice is to rejoice. Amen. What if you lost your job? What is it? The choice is to rejoice. What if you have pain in your right foot? What if you have pain in your right foot? The choice is to rejoice. Now, what if your husband... And or your wife left you. 
the choice is to rejoice. I want you to take note of the, the, the smiley emoticons on the... You know, because some of you would rather that your husband or wife would leave you, right? <laughs> That's just a joke. Don't take me too seriously. What if you failed an exam? The choice is to rejoice. What if you can't find the right one? Amen. What if you can't find the right one? As any mga singles, all of the singles, wave your hand in the air, just as if you don't care. The choice is to rejoice. Rejoice lang. If you can find a girl by that name, rejoice much better. Lastly, what if your church building burnt down? The choice is to rejoice. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. If you notice, the emoticon there is the guy with the boxing gloves. Suntukan na to. Laban na. It's time to put on the... Actually, let's start taking off the gloves and fighting the fight now. Amen po. You know, it's now that we need to really fight the fight. Everything burnt down, we choose to rejoice. Let's open our, I'll just read with me, Psalm chapter 118 and verse 24 from the New Life Version. And it says, This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us be full of joy and be glad in it. Last Sunday, alam niyo Pastor Arnel, meron siyang secret weapon. Now, every time siya mag-share, kumakanta po siya. nag Don Moen siya last Sunday. You know, that's something I can't do. But I'll do this today. This is one of my favorite songs. This is the day. This is the day. Sandali, harap lang tayo sa camera. Walang, uh, ah, walang ilaw. Lang. That the Lord has made. <laughs> I love you. How, how many of you were Christians during the 80s? Hallelujah. If you were a Christian in the 80s, it's like deja vu. Every Sunday is deja vu. The same songs, and the preacher preaches the same thing every Sunday. Walang pagbabago. Kaya tuloy mga congregation, di rin nagbabago. You know, and the songs are always, this is the day. And because a lack of, uh, kulang na kulang po tayo sa materialis regarding songs, you know, in the old days, me and Pastor Arnel, we, we would try to, what do you call this? Improvise on some of the songs. So yung this is the day means, and this is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made. This is the day. This is the day. See, wala nang mahanap na kanta eh. So that's what we would always do. I mean, so hindi mo alam kung ano kayo, discarte ni pastor na sa Sunday. Mabilis ba mabagal, ganun eh. But the reason why I share this with you, uh, we'll get into it in a little, uh, little bit more as we read different versions of this verse. In the Good News Translation, it says, this, this is the day of the Lord's victory. Let us be happy. Let us celebrate. Alam nyo, the word happy has uh, seemed to disappear from the Christian vocabulary simply because we think that happiness depends on the happening, which to a degree is true, but let, me, let us understand that there is always victory happening anyways. Amen po. There is a reason to be happy. Because the Bible says, happy is the man that puts his trust in the Lord. Amen. There is a reason to be happy. That is coming from an expert on happiness. I am always happy. See this face? This is a happy face. Okay. From the Amplified Bible of Habakkuk chapter 3 and verse 18, ganito pong sinasabi. Yet I will choose to rejoice in the Lord. I will choose to shout out in exaltation in the victorious God 
of my salvation. We'll get back to this verse towards the end of my uh, sermon. But I, I, I would like to show you in, ampl in the Amplified. It says, I will choose. This is where I got the title of my message. I will choose to rejoice. That means you have to make a choice. If this doesn't dawn on you. This doesn't come upon you that you want to rejoice. Hindi basta-basta nangyayari. Rejoicing is a choice. Amen po. You have to make a choice to rejoice. In Habakkuk chapter 3 verse 18 from the Names of God Bible. And it says, Even then, I will be happy with Yahweh. I will truly find joy in God who saves me. The New English translation says, I will rejoice because of the Lord. I will be happy because of the God who delivered me, delivers me. And lastly, from the New Life Version, and it says, Yet I will have joy in the Lord. I will be glad in the God who saves me. Last Wednesday, remember the word, uh, the words choice is to rejoice. Last Wednesday, uh, si Sister Margie po yung nag, uh, lead ng worship during our uh, midweek service. And one of our choices of, uh, of uh, songs was the hymn, It Is Well. And I remember a little bit of the story of the hymn, It Is Well. Let me just share with you a little bit about it. It was uh, composed by Spafford. In 1871, his, his son died. And uh, a, few le a, a year or so later, there was a great fire in Chicago. Nasunog po yung kanyang business. He's a, an, a, a lawyer and a businessman as well. His uh, business was, uh, was caught in, in the fire, the great fire in Chicago. And um, he, he, his uh, business was ruined. His, things weren't going well. So what happened was uh, his wife and four daughters... They decided decide to, uh, they had a plan to travel to Europe, along with uh, Spafford. So, completo silang family, they could take a vacation to Europe. But uh, this happened in 1873. But uh, what happened was, uh, see, Spafford had some kind of a business emergency. So, he, he sent his, because everything was booked, he sent his wife and the four daughters to go ahead, and his, his intention was to follow. What happened was uh, the ship they were riding, the SS Ville du Havre, uh, collided with another vessel, the Loch Urn, and in the Atlantic it uh, capsized. And uh, I don't know, a few days later, his wife Anna, who survived the tragedy, sent uh, a telegram. It's one of the most famous telegrams ever sent. And on the telegram, all it said was, saved alone. Kasi siya lamang yun natira in the family. All four daughters uh, died. And uh, you know how it was before, before text messaging and before uh, emails you know, telegrams had to be short. So she couldn't explain a lot. All she said was, saved alone. And so the husband intended to follow immediately. But as he was uh, contemplating on what was happening, his son died two years prior. Business was destroyed by a fire. He loses four of his kids all at the same time. What does he say? He composes this him and the refrain of the hymn is it is well it is well with my soul with my soul it is well it is well with my soul 
This is a choice that he made. To believe that it's truly well. Even through difficult times. Kahit may mga pagsubok tayong pinagdadaanan. It is well with my soul. Amen po. The choice is to rejoice. In Philippians chapter 4 and verse 4 it says, Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. From the International Children's Bible it says, Be full of joy in the Lord always. I will say again, be full of joy. And from the Phillips translation it says, Delight yourselves in God. Yes, find your joy in Him at all times. Now when Paul wrote this, he was under house arrest. Nakakulong po siya nito. And this is the final, this is the, some of the final writings of, of Paul. And this is the end, going to the end of his letter to the Philippians, to the Philippian church. At ang sabi niya, in closing, he's saying, Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Pero he's, he's at a time of a difficult, he's at a difficult time in his life. Mahirap ang kanyang uh, kinalalagyan. He's in, under house arrest. He's being mistreated, being persecuted. And he's writing to the church and he's saying, rejoice. And again, I say rejoice. He didn't just say rejoice, pero sabi niya, and again, I say rejoice. Inuulit ko. Rejoice. Now, when somebody says, again, I say it, that means that it's so important. Napaka importante. When you read his, his writings, this is the very few times he says, and again, I say this. Rejoicing is truly an important part of our life. Amen, Paul. We have to learn how to rejoice because it will take you through the fire. Rejoicing will take you through the problem. Rejoicing will give strength to you. Remember the old song, The Joy of the Lord. Wala na nakakailalam ng kanta na yun. You know, those old songs always remind us of the basics of God's word. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 16. Rejoice always from the New International Version. From the Amplified Bible, it says, Rejoice always and delight in your faith. When I look at this from the Amplified Bible, I realize that our capacity to rejoice is interdependent on our faith. No faith, no rejoicing. Amen, Paul. So our ability to rejoice is connected to how much faith we have in God. If you don't trust God, if you don't have faith in God, there's no reason to rejoice. So if you want to live a life of rejoicing, improve on your faith. The Bible says, faith comes by hearing and by hearing the word of God. Amen, Paul. Rejoice always and delight in your faith. Psalm chapter 33 and verse 21 from the New International Version. In Him our hearts rejoice, for we trust in His holy name. From the Amplified Bible it says, For in Him our heart rejoices, because we trust, lean on, rely on, and are confident in His holy name. Yes, bad things happen to good people. Just in case you were wondering. Yes, bad things happen to good people. <clears throat> Maybe some of you have asked this question. Why would God allow a church to be burnt down? Out of all the buildings that can be burnt down, across the street actually, there's, there's a, some kind of establishment that turns into a club at night. Why not? Why didn't you hit the other building, Lord? Tama ba ako? Have you, have you ever asked that question? You know, there's, there's other establishments in the city that promote uh, prostitution. 
that promote drinking? Why didn't they catch on fire? Why a church that is preaching God's word? Why would you allow this, oh God? Just in case you ask that question. The answer is, all I know is that bad things can happen to good people. But the choice is to rejoice. Amen, Paul? The choice is to rejoice. We have really, there's really no other, no other choice. Anong gagawin natin? Magmumukmuk ba tayo? Are we going to feel sad? There's really no other choice. The choice is to rejoice. Now let me explain just a bit, hopefully, through Habakkuk chapter 3, verse 17, hanggang 18, that God will and sometimes allows difficult times. Habakkuk chapter 3, and verse 17, it says, Though the fig tree does not blossom, and there is no fruit on the vines, Though the yield of the olive fails and the fields produce no food. Though the flock is cut off from the fold and there are no cattle in the stalls. Yet, I will choose to rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord. I will choose to shout in exultation in the victorious God of my salvation. The best choice regardless of the circumstances is to rejoice, regardless of the circumstance, whether there is produce or not. Meron o wala, our choice should always be to rejoice. The choice is to rejoice. We don't wait for the circumstance to change before we rejoice. When we rejoice, God can change the circumstances for us or change us in the circumstance. Sometimes, God doesn't change the circumstances. Minsan, He hindi niya binabago. But one thing that always happens in every circumstance, if you and I choose to rejoice, God will change us. Amen po? That's the reason for all of this. If you have a question, why do bad things happen to good people? The answer is Change. Because God wants to bring forth change in our life. Amen. God wants to bring forth change. I shared many years ago on the word intervention. As Christians, we have developed this word, God intervene. And we ask for God's intervention in our lives. And one night, I decided to make a study on the word intervention or intervene. And I find out that one of the meanings of intervention is interrupt. So if you want God to intervene in your life, He certainly has to interrupt your life. And that's what I've seen in our life as a church. When God interrupted what was taking place on a normal basis in the church, things happened. Amen, Paul. Lives have been changed. Your faith, our faith, has been strengthened. Our relationship to one another has been strengthened. Amen, Paul? That's, what's, that's the reason for difficult times. It's a progress and a process of change that God wants to happen in our lives. Amen, Paul? So don't always ask God to change the circumstance. Remember, the circumstance is there to change us. It's there to make things better in here. Yung ating mga puso. That's the more important thing. It's not the church building for that. It's not your business. It's not your family. The important thing is what the change that is taking place in your heart. Let us pray. Tayo po yung Father, we thank you for this evening. We thank you, Father, for allowing us to hear your word and remind us about rejoicing, a choice to rejoice. We give you praise, O oh God, tonight. Mga kapatid, brothers and sisters, some of you here tonight may have have been going through a difficult time. 
And as I've mentioned, yes, difficult times happen to good people. Difficult times happen to the church. Difficult times happen to those that believe in Jesus Christ. But the reason is for change, as I've mentioned. However, during times like this, you do need a, bit, a little bit of help. We need each other. We need the body of Christ to rally with us. Just acknowledge that I, I need some help. And I, I believe that the best help that you can give is to pray and to talk to God. Because when we talk to God, we're talking to the maker of heaven and earth. We're talk, talking to the one that can do things. The God that can make miracles. So kung kayo po, if this is you, I'm talking to you. You've been going through a difficult time. Maybe your family, maybe your business. Or maybe just a, a time in your life that you feel confused. You don't understand exactly why you're feeling this way. Hindi mo naintindihan bakit ganun. We as the body of Christ here, we would like to pray for you. So kung ikaw po yun, I would ask that you just stand up and come to the front. And we would like to pray for you. Meron po dito, you want to you want to be prayed for. God is here. The presence of God is here. You've been going through a difficult time. You've been, chal- you've been challenged by your uh, situations. Don't be afraid. Come, come forward. And we'll have some people that will pray with you tonight. Sige po. I'm sorry for the distance. Medyo malayo yung iba, but please do come forward. This is what the body of Christ is here for. We're here to stand with one another. There's nothing impossible with our God. Wala pong imposible sa ating Diyos. This is why we're here. This is what church is all about. It's not just to hear the word, but it's to help one another out in life. We put our trust in God, mga kapatid. It's not about anybody up front. Hindi, not about the pastors or the leadership. But we're here together in this. Sama-sama po tayo. Sama-sama po tayo dito. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. I know this will be a little difficult, mga kapatid, but... Uh, Bear with us. But as we always do, it's not just the pastors that are here to pray for, for the, the people. Hindi lang kami. So I'll ask, as we always do, anybody from the congregation to come forward and put your hands on some of these people. Make sure everybody has somebody with hands being laid upon them. We're in this together, mga kapatid. We're in this together. This is about family. This is about the body of Christ. So please find your way, come up front, make sure somebody has a hand on their shoulder. This is the perfect time to express the brotherly love. Pag-ibig natin sa bawat isa. This is open to uh, young people, kids, mga, uh, uh, youth, Anybody that wants to come up front and pray for somebody, please do so. Pwede po, kahit, kahit ano pong edad natin. Because we're talking to God. Okay, now, you may start praying. Sige po, you just start praying for the person in front of you. However you're, you're led to pray tonight, sige po, just start praying for one another.
all stand up. Let's worship our God tonight. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Just worship Him and rejoice in Him. Hallelujah. Victory belongs to you. Victory belongs to us in Christ Jesus. Come on, church. Let's worship the Lord. 